Worldwide, cervical cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death among women. Many women still go undiagnosed due to inadequate screening programs or lack of participation. Cervical cancer can affect young women in their 20s and 30s. Screening methodologies are available to identify women at risk. These methodologies are based on testing for high-risk HPV types. High-risk HPV infection is a necessary cause of cervical cancer and provides a high degree of confidence that women who are negative for high-risk HPV will not go on to develop cervical cancer. However, since approximately 80% of women infected with HPV will spontaneously clear the virus within two years, the presence of high-risk HPV alone does not predict the development of cervical cancer. Depending on the population being screened, only 3-10% to of women infected with high-risk HPV will develop precursors of cervical cancer, or SYN2+. New tests are needed to improve the specificity of high-risk HPV screening. In summary, worldwide, cervical cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death among women. High-risk HPV is a necessary cause of cervical cancer. 80% of women will spontaneously clear the high-risk HPV virus within the first two years. Only 3 to 10% of women with high-risk HPV will develop precursor cancer lesions. High-risk HPV has a relatively low positive predictive value, but a high negative predictive value. More specific tests are needed. It is important to understand the infection process of the HPV virus. The cervix is the lower end of the uterus that extends into the vagina and becomes infected with HPV. Microabrasions or small tears sometimes occur in the lining of the cervical epithelium. In a normal cervix, HPV spreads through the cytoplasm of nearby cells and up to the epithelium surface. In an abnormal cervix, instead of remaining in the cytoplasm, the virus enters the nucleus and integrates into the genome of the host cell. The HPV cancer-causing genes E6 and E7 are made into messenger RNA and lead to cellular transformation, which results in uncontrolled cell division. Abnormal cells expressing large quantities of E6 and E7 mRNA multiply from the basal layer of the epithelium, which would be categorized as SYN1, then through the lower half of the epithelium, or SYN2, and ultimately through the entire thickness of the epithelium, or SYN3. Invasive cervical cancer ensues when abnormal cells break through the basal membrane. The first step in any screening test is for the clinician to take a cervical sample. After collection, the brush is immersed and swirled into a vial containing cell preservative. After the high-risk HPV virus comes into contact with the cells of the cervix, the virus enters the cytoplasm. The circular genome of HPV is released into the cytoplasm and in the majority of infections remains as a stable episome. Under certain circumstances, the HPV genome becomes linear and moves into the nucleus of the cell. The DNA from the HPV virus contains nine different genes. Early genes are designated as E and late genes are designated as L. When the linearized HPV DNA integrates into the host DNA of the infected cell, some HPV genes are lost. Most importantly, the HPV gene E2 is deleted, which shuts off the E6, E7 oncogenes. The tumor suppressor genes P53 and RB exist as proteins in the cytoplasm. When the E6, E7 mRNA is made following the deletion of E2, they are made into proteins which bind to P53 and RB and inactivate their tumor suppressor functions. Cellular transformation ensues, leading in many cases to cervical cancer. The overexpression of E6 and E7 inside the cell is the basis for the HPV Oncotect assay. HPV Oncotect is specifically designed to detect and quantify E6 and E7 mRNA inside each and every epithelial cell collected. Proprietary reagents in the test are able to create very tiny holes in the cell and nuclear membrane. This then provides the avenue for the target reagents to attach to the E6-E7 mRNA. 
These reactions are all taking place while the individual cells are still intact. Because the in-cell DX proprietary process does not alter the morphology of cells, ectocervical cells, endocervical cells, and other cell types can easily be detected by light scatter alone. Cells that overexpress E6, E7 mRNA turn bright green and can be detected with the majority of installed flow cytometers, including in-cell DX molecular platforms. When a flow cytometer is processing HPV Oncotect, the cells pass single file through a laser. Ectocervical cells are quantified to assess specimen adequacy prior to analysis of HPV E6, E7 mRNA overexpression. Quantification is on two levels. First, the amount of E6, E7 mRNA is quantified on a cell-by-cell -cell basis. Second, the percentage of cells expressing high levels of E6, E7 mRNA are quantified and reported. The presence and degree of cervical lesions correlates with the quantification of cells expressing high levels of E6, E7 mRNA. The HPV Oncotech Patient Report provides an assessment of cellular adequacy in addition to whether the degree of E6, E7 mRNA overexpression is high enough to correlate with a treatable, high-grade lesion by biopsy. If the patient does exceed a certain threshold of E6, E7 mRNA overexpression, the result will reflect a positive. Below the threshold, the result is negative. Summary of Key Points of HPV and HPV Oncotect The presence and degree of cervical lesions correlates with the quantification of cells expressing high levels of E6, E7 mRNA. The HPV Oncotect E6, E7 mRNA test can be run directly from cervical cells collected in liquid cytology vials. The HPV Oncotect assay is based on a unique detection method that quantifies two important pieces of information. The quantity of E6, E7 mRNA in each cell. The quantity of cells overexpressing E6, E7 mRNA. Other commercial assays detect the total E6, E7 mRNA expression after the cells have been lysed, whereas the unique patented technology by InCell DX detects the amount in each and every cell, which has the promise of being more predictive of the transformation to cervical cancer.